You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my awesome co-host, we interview the innovators in this space every week. I'm super excited about this episode. It's come together very quickly. Ivan, can you please go ahead and introduce today's guest? Yeah, I'm uh, Ivan Zak. Very excited to introduce our guest today with the upcoming VMX. I'm sure everybody is excited to get out of their homes and uh, travel to this conference. I'm happy to introduce Jean O'Neill, the uh, Chief Executive Officer of North American Veterinary Community. Jean is currently the CEO, but he started at the NAVC as the CFO. And then recently, in a couple of years, he went up and uh, he did some transformational changes in the organization that helped to live and uh, flourish through this COVID time. So, Gene, welcome to the show. Why don't you tell us a couple of words about what happened in the last couple of years? Good morning, guys. Uh, how's everybody doing today? Awesome. Great, great. Yeah, so thanks for the uh, thanks for the invite, and uh, thanks for uh, allowing me to tell our story here at NABC. So, like you said, I came in as the CFO about seven, seven or eight years ago, and um, I, I'm telling you that when I came in, uh, one of the first things I noticed that NABC was what they were noted for and what they're still noted for is their conference, largest veterinary educational conference in the world. At the time, that was pretty much the only product that NABC was promoting. And, you know, as a CFO, I, you know, had a lot of sleepless nights with all our eggs in one basket. You know, what happens when something were to happen? What's our plan B, you know, to sustain the organization the rest of the year? So over the next five or six years, We expanded our portfolio to even out that revenue stream. So we built the industry's largest publication uh, division, and we also introduced some online learning opportunities to our Vetfolio product that allowed us to continue on our our revenue stream throughout the year. So we weren't just waiting for that one event to bring in all the funds that we needed to sustain the organization. So, you know, things like that, but underline when you peel back the onion on some of those products is where you really get into the the substance of what NEVC is all about. That's awesome. That's uh, that's what happens when the CFO takes the control. Maybe that's what you should, should do in your company. Uh, I know that he's a little more reliable than you are. You, you need to get a CFO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do need to get a CFO. So, Gene, there, there's multiple vectors yeah. right now, multiple revenue streams. Uh, what is the most exciting to you? What do you What do you kind of wake up and and happy about? So, um, listen, I, I can't uh, I can't lie and say I'm not excited about VMX because uh, if you haven't been there, it, it's not a conference. It really, truly is an event that you have to experience. Experiencing it live is preferable, but if you can't experience it live, we have given the world the opportunity to experience it virtually. So that's new for us this year is, um, you know, and I always tell the story that I do a lot of traveling because we have some affiliates around the world and some sister organizations that we support through other conferences and and other events. And and what I hear constantly are from those uh, attendees or those that are supporting those groups is that they would love to come to VMX and they want to know what NABC is doing. They want to somehow be affiliated with NABC just to be recognized uh, that they have kept abreast of what NABC is doing and they can attend, but to be there financially or geographically, they can't get there to Orlando. So giving them the option to attend our event virtually has really been a game changer for us. And it really has been a, a great equalizer in allowing those around the world uh, in from different, uh, like I said, geographical positioning or financial constraints, travel constraints, they are allowed to see this. So, I mean, that gets me excited because this is the first year we'll be doing that. This event coming up next week is the first time we are broadcasting as, as you know, you hear the word hybrid event. This is the first time we'll be doing this. But I really see this being a, a real growing version of our offerings, not just VMX, but others as well. So that gets me really excited. And, you know, what we can do virtually now And we saw this early on in the pandemic and organizations were coming out, other educational opportunities were coming out, but they just seemed to be coming out and offering quick CE opportunities for a day or a weekend. And as I sat back and looked at it, 
you know, I was a little concerned that we weren't out there doing anything when the pandemic first hit. But I, I think the way we approached it was uh, in a more methodical, more thoughtful way of what it's going to look like and how it's going to be an NABC product. I'm glad that we didn't do this. I'm glad we didn't jump out there and just throw something out there because then we, we would have been like everyone else. But when you see, when you get to see what our version of virtual looks like, then you'll understand why we why we waited to put something out there that the marketplace would really be interested in and really build that following for the NABC brand. It really allows you to build your reach as well. And correct me if I'm wrong, Gene, I think you guys kind of started down this virtual path before the pandemic even took a hold. Yeah, we did. And yeah, thanks for bringing that up because uh, this is very prescient for us is uh, we, we saw the opportunity in one of our, if you come to the event, you'll know that we have a huge, huge exhibit hall. Um, on a normal year, we have over 750 exhibitors from around the world that come to the event. And we saw an opportunity there to have them promote their brand year round. Uh, we, we thought that a five day event was great, but what could we do for them to be able to reach uh, the marketplace uh, on a year-round basis. So we partnered with an organization who gave us the opportunity to go virtual in our exhibit hall. And it's not just a one-dimensional click on their website or click on a link to bring them to their website. These are actual 3D interactive booths that you can go to online where you can see the latest products that each of these organizations have. You can engage in them for follow-up calls. You can see the latest articles they've written, schedule meetings. It's all very interactive, hands-on. It's really pretty cool when you see it. It's, it's a video game, you know, and that's kind of the, you know, changing demographic in this industry is, you know, the millennials coming in. What are they familiar with? Well, they're familiar with videos and video games. And this is what we're trying to do, gamify it somehow. So it's really something that we, and we rolled this out in January of 2020. And as you all know, right after our conference was when, uh, you know, the pandemic seemed to reach globally and shut things down. So we were, all, we were already ahead of the wave in that, which gave us a big advantage going into the summer months and the rest of 2020. That's amazing. And, you know, that just raises a question that if you were so prepared for pandemic and it was not a response to pandemic, uh, did you cause the pandemic for this to work? (laughs) (laughs) We can just ignore him, Gene. (laughs) So one thing that we're really excited about is the startup circle at VMX. This is uh, because, you know, we our show is very much about uh, entrepreneurs and innovators. Uh, This is actually almost 100 or the next one is a 100th episode. And we had all these entrepreneurs every week we interview someone. What is the startup circle? How to participate in this and what does it look like in 2021? So what the startup circle is, and we started this about four years ago, I guess, and we give those uh, up and coming organizations, businesses to showcase their product to the marketplace. So it really is, uh, it's a mini version or our version of Shark Tank, if you will. So so we give every, everybody an opportunity based on certain criteria uh, on, on how it would be presented. And we've had things, you know, and, and these are things that are either directly to the attendee or they're a B2B product or a B2C, you know, so they're all different types of products that are coming out. You know, we've had everything from healthcare for pets, you know, pet insurance. We've had some uh, software uh, releases. Uh, we've had some subscriptions for for monthly services, diagnostic equipment. I mean, it's it's everything that you can think of that is bringing a value to the veterinary community. You know, I, 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 I've always said and like to think that, you know, even myself, when I do things repetitively and say there's got to be a, way, a better way, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. And I can see this in all of these products that come out that, yeah, somebody's been working with something for a long time and they said, there's got to be a better way to do this. And that's what these organizations are doing. So we give them, a, we give them that forum uh, to allow them to talk about what they've done and, you know, give them the opportunity to get it out to market. That's awesome. And, you know, your version is nicer. I usually say that innovation comes from frustration because you're frustrated doing something. <laughs> yeah. Necessity yeah, yeah. is a nicer way to put it. Yeah. So the other thing is that probably listeners, because we're going to release it right before and everybody's traveling there, it would be probably uh, uh, worthwhile just to talk a little bit about the event itself um, because of the sure. pandemic. Are there, is there anything that visitors needs to know 
uh, you know, prior to going there? Are there any restrictions or anything like that? Okay. Yeah, I'd be happy to because this is something that we committed to uh, last year when we were planning for this event. Uh, we were even planning on having this event in January, which was a little risky for us, but, you know, we were still ready to go. Even at the height of the pandemic at that time, we were still ready because our partners, the hotels and the convention center where we're holding it, were well, well equipped and well prepared. And they still are. And so for your listeners, what I would say, if you plan on coming to Orlando for this event, uh, I want you to know that you should feel as safe as any other year you've been here because of the precautions that we've taken. And this isn't just the NABC. This is the convention center where the event is being held. This is in the host hotels where you'll be staying. So I would say if you're ready to come here, the one thing is don't forget to pack your mask because uh, the mask mandate is still in effect. Uh, you know, Florida, uh, Orlando specifically, uh, is, you know, the largest tourist destination in the world. And these people know how to do it and they do it right. So, you know, theme parks have taken precautions all along and they've just recently relaxed their mask mandate. We, however, uh, want to take that just another step to say, you know, from the very onset of this journey we had for planning this event, we committed to those attendees that we were going to take some precautions and mask mandating a mask and social distancing and sanitization stations were all in that promise to the attendees. So we're going to continue that promise. So when you're in the session rooms, uh, we're going to require uh, social distancing. When you're walking through the concourse or anywhere in the convention center or anywhere inside, a mask is required. Our outdoor events, which we will have, which is uh, which is great. We're going to have some outdoor entertainment. You know, it's going to be a mixed. So when you're walking around, we're going to require a mask. But once you're seated and situated, you know, feel free to, to take your mask off. But be prepared because uh, what you read in the news about everything that's going on, the CD regulations and how they're quickly they're changing. I just want to let everybody know that we're still going forward with our safety precautions as a commitment to those that are attending. And Gene, what's the event going to look like? I'm sure a ton of the listeners are like, you know, they've been to VMX before, they're familiar with the event. And like you said, it's the biggest trade show in the world. People come from all over the planet to go to this show every year for 20 years or longer. Right. You know, what's going to be different this year? Like how many people are you expecting? You know, just kind of give our listeners to a feel, because I'm sure there's some people that are going to be listening to this podcast uh, tomorrow and they're going to sure. be like, you know what, maybe maybe I'll go, you know, so what's it going to look like? Like everything else, we didn't want, uh, you know, a good crisis go to waste. So we're, tr we're trying to figure out what we can do. And I think coming out of this, we're looking at coming up with a more intimate setting for those that are attending. So if you've attended in the past and you were overwhelmed by... The, the magnitude of the crowds that you would see on the concourse or in the, or in the session rooms, or maybe even being shut out of some session rooms because they were so popular that we had to go into an overflow situation. Uh, this year, it won't be as crowded just due to the circumstances. It won't be as crowded from an attendee standpoint and from a exhibitor standpoint, but it's given us the idea that a smaller event could be, you know, in the future for NABC. And it could be, you know, something that complements the VMX experience. So uh, the crowds won't be as big. Exhibit hall will be still a large exhibit hall, but we won't have uh, some of the organizations there due to travel restrictions, which, uh, you know, there's uh, everyone is still uh, undergoing some of those and still being controlled by some of those. But it will be from the event itself, you know, the same quality content that you've gotten in the past, the same global speakers that we bring in, the well, the well-known names are coming in. Um, I think it'll be more enjoyable experience for those maybe who have been used to uh, shoulder to shoulder uh, with, with some of your attendees in session rooms, but this is a more intimate experience that you'll, you'll, you'll have for, for BMX. That's awesome. And uh, I love that. I, I, I wrote it down. Good crisis go to waste. I really like that. <laughs> We're going to use that. John used pandemic pretty well with all the government grants and everything else that happened for his startup. So unfortunately, we are locked in uh, in Canada, some of us uh, in the province where I'm at. I can't go. I've been to VMX, I think, last 10 years in a row, and I can't oh, go because... Bad. 
the returning is difficult. Going not, especially because we have a rumor in Canada that Florida just doesn't have pandemic. Uh, it's like an isolated state in the in the states. But coming back is a is a difficulty. So hopefully, I can catch up with some of these things virtually. I wanted to ask you uh, about VIS. What is that initiative about? Because not everybody. I've been there every time. I've been a speaker there. And then uh, do you want to just open up a little bit and, and tell the listeners what it is about? Because that's really a sort of an entrepreneurial place as well. Um, sure. Uh, so VIS, uh, Veterinary Innovation Summit, is, again, something that uh, was a partnership that we did with Texas A&M uh, a few years back. And we held it uh, on the Texas A&M campus. And again, it's given the, the opportunity for organizations to actually present to uh, to the industry, because there, there are some industry players there that, uh, you know, to talk about your product and to better display what your product looks like. So this year, this year, the event is being held in, in the um, Animal Health Corridor in Kansas City. So the players are a little bit more readily available and they will be attending as well. We're still working on the agenda for that that event coming up in August. But again, it's an in-person two to three day discussion, classroom discussion about different innovative topics that have come up, different products that are influencing the industry and allowing some of these organizations to actually get up and present to a very influential audience what their product is, how it benefits the industry, the sustainability of it for the industry, how it scale, the scalability of it. So this is really, this is really, you know, I, I keep saying Shark Tank because that's the only that's the only uh, example I can think of, but it really allows organizations and, and, you know, NABC is not a tech company, you know, we're, we're an educational organization, but I think that our platform is so broad and so diverse that being able to allow organizations to do this is a huge benefit for both NABC and for the industry, because I think our reach allows some of these organizations to get a platform where uh, others will listen to them. So. That's, uh, that's coming up in August. Yeah, Gene, I think it's also really important for the entrepreneurs that are starting these new kind of tech companies to be able to be exposed to such an incredible audience. And I think, you know, all of the things that you've done since kind of taking over the reins at NAVC, diversifying the revenue streams, you know, adding these different conferences and you know, allowing entrepreneurs to have a place to kind of access this kind of global community of, of veterinary professionals is pretty incredible. So thanks for coming to the show. I'm pretty excited to get to meet you, hopefully in Orlando in a week. Yeah. And we always like to end the show the same way. Um, so we've got a couple of questions for you because we, we burn through the oh, 20 great. minutes super fast as we <laughs> always do. So the yeah. questions that we've got for you, the first one is, a book, a TED Talk, a YouTube video, something that you've seen in your career that's inspired you to be able to kind of do what you're doing. So, so the one book that I read uh, going back uh, in one of my positions that I held, I uh, actually worked uh, uh, in this, this, the SeaWorld down here in Florida. And one of, my, one of my positions was looking at processes and process improvement. And this is something I've carried with me throughout my career. The one book that I read that still impacts me today is called The Goal. One of my favorite, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? So, so The Goal, written by uh, Eli Goldratt, it's a technical book, but it's fiction. So he combines both, into, and, he, and he wields this story about how a factory on the verge of collapse refines its processes to then flourish. So, But it's told in such a way that it's very, it's a, it's a page turner. It's not a, oh my God, I got to read this book. Are you kidding me? You know, it's, it's, it really grabs your attention and you come away with it thinking that everything that you do in life, everything you do is a process and every process can be improved and you, and you never stop trying to improve it. And this is what I try to convey to my staff as well is, you know, let's look at things that we've done in the past. Let's see how we can do it better, but don't just stop there. Take it the next step as well and say, okay, now that we're at the point where we think we're happy, Let's improve it again. So this book really set the stage for me in my career. And I've used it in every position that I've had. I look at things differently because of that book. Absolutely. No, it's one of my favorite. And uh, yeah, that's uh, they, they, he laid out the theory of constraint in such a storytelling manner that, uh, that right. really helped me. And uh, a lot, like my previous product, SmartFlow, it was all based actually 
on that, uh, relieving the oh, sort of the, right? the constraints yeah. along the along the veterinary hospital process. So I love that. Thank you. And the last question that we usually ask, and we always close with that, is there anybody in the industry that you would recommend as a, another innovator or just an empowering person uh, who could be a guest on this show? So, so I've come across quite a few in my uh, tenure here at NABC, uh, but the one that really most recently sticks out in my mind because he's uh, a candidate for uh, the board of directors for NABC and also sits on our Veterinary Innovation Council board. His name is uh, Jason Johnson. And Jason, I think, is currently the uh, CMO at uh, IDEX. He's a visionary, and that's the first thing I got from him when I first talked to him and first was exposed to him, the way he thinks and the way he plans for things. He was the uh, actually co-founder and dean of uh, LMU College of Veterinary Medicine. And this, you know, he's a vet, but he's also a visionary in the field. Uh, I think he would be uh, someone who your listeners would like to hear speak about how he approaches things and what he sees the future of veterinary health, veterinary medicine, the industry. Uh, I think he would be a, a great guest on your show. Thank you so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. If you want to hear about our new episodes, please follow us on any social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. See you next week.